Hello Facebook, hello YouTube, this is Ruben. I'm back again with another Ruben Report. I just want to give a short update. Um, after my uh, valve adjustment that I did uh, a couple days ago, I've been riding the bike back and forth to work as usual um, for the past uh, two, three days. This is, this is day number three. Um, we did the valve adjustment at about 1,900 miles, and now we are at uh, 2,080, 2,087, so 60 miles a day, 100, 180 miles, so that's, that's pretty much where we're at. The bike right now, like, it's not running terrible, but it's starting, it's, it's starting to, I, I can already tell that the valves are starting to tighten up again. It was doing great the first day. <laughs> the very first day it was it was great. Second day, uh, and then today is, you know, not doing that so great. Okay. The idle. It's 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 a little bit higher than what it should be. It's it's not it's not extremely high, but it, we're starting to see those symptoms again. And let me go ahead and turn her off. I, I got in contact with uh, CSC, um, let them know what the situation is, and uh, yeah, it's, this is this is definitely something else. Um, they are anticipating that it might be something with my top end, maybe the cylinder head, maybe something of that nature, um, but. I, I'm just kind of curious because as far as the bike's behavior, it's pretty much been relatively consistent. This, this all before I, I started my, my actual new job position, right? Before I started my new job position, um, I really wasn't riding the bike all that much. Uh, I did that first valve adjustment at 500. And then you guys, you, you, you guys know, I've done a lot of different uh, testing videos, top speed, this and that, and whatsoever. Bike was running great. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have been able to reach top speeds with the different gearings and such if the bike was running poorly, right? Um, <clears throat> and at about 1,300 miles um, due to, which is understandable, due to a lot of the high speed test I was doing, uh, I did a valve adjustment at that point in time, 1350 or so like that. And then uh, about the next day after, well, after I d released that one video where I did my old change at 1350 miles, uh, just the day before that I did the um, valve adjustment. And pretty much the, the following week thereafter, starting like March 28th, that was when I started to go to work. I started to use the bike for what it is that I bought it for. And it lasted a day. And then the, the second day when I was coming back, that's when I started you know, having issues. And that's when I made the video of, uh, you know, having the valve cover bolt um, round out so I did a valve adjustment all right we're, we're gonna keep track here valve adjustment at 500 miles a valve adjustment at 1350 the third valve adjustment was at 1400 and 10 1410 something like that then the fifth valve adjustment was at about 1,630, 1,660, it's 1,600 miles, okay? And the very last valve adjustment that we just did was at 1,900 miles, okay? And I'm, I'm constantly seeing this pattern where I, I adjust them, they don't last for very long, and then we're right back to square one where the bike is, is running, um, like such again and uh, 
I've been doing a lot of, a lot of research. I've been doing a lot of uh, digging. Obviously, so far, all I've been doing is adjusting them according to what the actual manual says, which is the, the standard spacing of 0 0.06 and 0 0.08. And I'm just curious. I'm, I'm just curious to know, like, what maybe, what if, what if instead of adjusting them to what the manual says, I just make them a little bit larger? Not a whole lot, just a little bit larger and just experiment with how long that may last. Okay. If that doesn't work, then my, I guess my absolute last resort is just to uh, wheel it off to the nearest uh, service center that is out here. I believe there's one like two and a half hours away from me. And it's going to be an excursion, but I would like to, to test out <laughs> adjusting the valves to make them the, 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 the valve space a little bit larger than yeah, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in detail about certain things that I've certain info that I've found, certain things that I've been um, researching because I, I find it interesting. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna we're gonna switch to that right now. All right, guys, I, I want to show you guys a couple things that I've been uh, pondering about and a couple things that I've been researching, just trying to piece all this together to really really try to figure out what's what could be the cause of this issue? Um, it could be. It could be that the I just got a bad apple, and um, you know there could be something wrong with my engine, maybe. Or it could be that I'm just not the typical writer. Right? I I just don't have the typical writing habits <laughs> of most people who own these bikes. So, you know, uh, just to reiterate, um, the very first valve adjustment I did at 500 miles, everybody knows that, that one, that one's probably the most famous one because I was doing it the first time and dropped my gas tank. But that one, that, that valve adjustment lasted the longest and it lasted the longest, even though I was doing multiple top speed tests and, uh, performance tests and Q and a videos and all these types of things. I was doing multiple of those different types of videos. I think the key difference between what I was doing back then and what I'm doing now is that back then I wasn't riding the bike every day. All right. And there's this concept from actually doing the valve adjustments is that, uh, Generally, when you do the valve adjustment, like it says here, you want to start with a cold engine. You want you to let your arc be cool completely. And what, what I think is happening, this, this is just, again, this is just my theory. Don't quote me on this. This is my theory, okay? I think the materials that make up the valves and just overall powertrain within the motor in itself. Um, obviously, it's not at the same level and quality as other brands. Obviously, yeah. just from the suggested 5,000 mile um, valve adjustment interval, you know, they're already anticipating it's it's supposed to, it's a lot lower than a lot of other 250 um, motorcycle uh, models that are out there. One if, just one for example is this is the let me go all the way up. This is the owner's manual for a Honda CRF 250 Rally. Okay, and in this manual, in their valve adjustment guide, okay. They will not even adjust. They do valve clearance inspections every 16,000 miles, not 5,000. Okay. And another one would be like the Kawasaki's. They do valve adjustments 
or actually valve inspections. It's very rare for you to actually have to do an adjustment on those bikes. They do an actual valve inspection at 7,600 miles. So other bikes are made with much higher quality tempered uh, steel. And I think that's a key thing uh, is that with the RX-3, um, the metal that's that's used in the engine ex possibly expands a lot more rapidly than other makes and models. And I think the main issue or the main thing that, because the only thing that's changed is my riding habits, right? Uh, even when I was doing a whole bunch of top speed videos and a bunch of uh, performance videos, Yes, the bike was sort of pushed to its limits, but because the bike always had an opportunity to cool completely, the valves it allowed the valves and the and the engine components to shrink back down to what they were supposed to, and it hardens. And as long as your this is just what I'm assuming, as long as your engine is given the opportunity to go through that heat cycle process it continues to harden it continues to uh, become a lot more stable and this is why uh, a lot of folks once they reach it's an unsaid number of miles relatively unsaid um, there's really no dead set number <laughs> but at some point in time you finally reach some type of mile mark where adjusting your valves is no longer frequent anymore it's more of an inspection and not really an adjustment okay but the issue for me when it comes to my riding habits now my bike never gets a break every single day every single day i am riding this bike and i am riding it you know with a high rpm for extended periods of time it gets maybe what uh 12 hours 13 11 hours of rest before i get back up and do it all over again and then on the weekend i go go i mean i go grocery shopping or do whatever other miscellaneous that's definitely not uh as intensive but still i'm doing the bike doesn't get a break the bike never really gets a break to just sit <laughs> and allow it to go through that full heat cycle of where the metal has been expanding and then cools down to harden um i'm i'm definitely not the typical i definitely don't have the, the typical uh riding habits of other motor uh, csc motorcycle owners out there a lot of you guys not all but a lot of you guys most mainly ride your bike on the weekends or just mainly ride your bike every now and then. Or you just don't ride it as long and as far as, as I do. Again, I do it 60 miles every day. So most other people don't have, uh, if they do use their bike to commute, usually not as far away as, as, as mine is. And to top that all off, um, my bike it's still relatively low miles. I don't think I have, I don't know if I'm even close to reaching that threshold uh, mileage mark where my valves will decide to just stop expanding. It's, it's, it's as if my bike is in consistent, constant, rapid expansion mode because it has no time to truly just cool and just sit and rest okay that's that's my theory but the thing that i that i just could not understand because we have this book written by um a very known uh, member of the community joe burke five thousand miles at eight thousand rpm i finally decided to start reading it i haven't finished it but I decided to start reading it, and here are some data points that I found very interesting. Okay, 
The very first trip that was noted in that book was the Baja trip. They did 1,700 miles. They did their first initial valve adjustment at around 200 or 300 miles, if I'm not mistaken. And they rode on, in total 1,700 miles within, I believe, five days. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it was all highway miles. It was some off-road. It was mixed. Can't really say if that was like extended periods of time at, at high mileage. But when we get to the actual preparation for the big 5,000 mile, 8,000 RPM trip, he quotes in his book that the engineers at Zhongshan, they initially and they originally intended for the valve adjustments for the RX-3 to be every 1,000 miles not 5,000, not even 2,500. They thought that those adjustments were, you know, that adjustment interval was extremely low, which I, I also agree, it is extremely low. But I just wanted to take that in consideration that the very manufacturer of this motorcycle thought it would be best initially that the adjustment should be every 1,000 miles. Okay? Just to take that in, into consideration. Uh, when Joe Burke did this uh, 5,000 mile run before he even started, his bike was already at 3,500 miles. Okay, I think that's very important to note, which it's plausible. It, it's relatively plausible that a bike that has reached 3,500 miles, maybe maybe has had their valves already set in enough to where they don't move as much or or where it wouldn't be necessary for an adjustment but what was even more interesting is that he also quoted in his book is that there were seven bikes there were seven people or seven other bikes that were with them that were brand new and, and that's what was mind boggling to me is that there's seven brand new bikes that before everybody left, there was a specific mechanic that adjusted the valves on every single bike. It doesn't necessarily specifically say to what value, like it doesn't say that they did it to 0 0.008 or it, it, it's just they everybody's valves were adjusted by this mechanic and nobody miraculously nobody had their uh you know valve clearance issues and so my big question is has this ever been replicated has there any been ever been anyone else out there who has bought a brand new rx3 adjusted the valves on the spot as soon as you bought it and then rode 5,000 miles without having any type of valve issues. The majority of the folks within the community and rightfully so, if you ride at high RPMs for extended periods of time, 8,000 RPMs for a very long time, a lot of these trips that were uh, documented in the book, you know, 300 miles, 200 miles, 100 and something, 150 miles a day. So he was riding every single day and, and the new bikes were riding every single day. I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. I just don't get how that's possible because I've, I have yet to have seen anyone else in the group with a brand new bike achieve that same type of performance now unless the valve train was replaced <laughs> at the before the trip was was done that's that's something different but i don't know uh, let me tell you, you know let me know what you guys think 
I, I think the the magic in having your vows or your valve adjustments stay put is them you know your bike going through that cycle of being allowed to cool and have a break to allow the engine to completely cool and for things to harden just like how you you make like tempered steel you heat everything up really really hot you let it cool you heat it up again you let it cool you heat it up again you let it cool and of course you can you can accelerate that process by you know rapid heat and then rapid cooling right so i think it's the same concept that applies to the bike here or or the metal material that is makes up the valve train um but of course other other brands that use much higher quality steel obviously have much longer valve in, in inspection intervals but let me know what you guys think uh, about all that um have any of you other folks out there let me know have any of you out there have replicated the same performance that joe burke has gotten with a absolutely brand new bike i understand it's 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 most likely plausible with a bike that has 3500 miles like he had on his but with a brand new bike that's that's quiet it's a bit questionable it's a little bit questionable all right. 